Good Saturday morning, everyone. Today on Perspectives, we're just days away from Alabama's primary runoff election. And having a runoff election so late in an election year is almost unprecedented. Back in March, Alabama Governor Kay Ivey announced the change of date because of the coronavirus pandemic. And, of course, that concern continues as some voters worry about the risk of infection at the polling place. Just last week, the U.S. Supreme Court in a 5-4 to four decision blocked a lower court ruling that would have allowed curbside voting as well as the waiving of some absentee ballot requirements due to COVID-19 concerns. That lawsuit was filed by the NAACP's Legal Defense and Educational Fund, the Southern Poverty Law Center, and the Alabama Disabilities Advocacy Program. Now, in a news release after the ruling, Alabama Attorney General Steve Marshall said that he was pleased the court acted so quickly, stating, quote, Alabama is again able to enforce laws that help ensure the fairness and integrity of our elections. Still, though, not everyone is in agreement with the ruling, including the NAACP, the Civil Rights Group, said that the Supreme Court's decision could endanger the health of those who are at risk for COVID-19. Meantime, though, there are several key runoffs on the ballot July the 14th. Former U.S. Attorney General Jeff Sessions is competing against ex Auburn head University uh, head football coach Tommy Tuberville to be the Republican candidate for the United States Senate in November. The winner will go head to head with current U.S. Senator Doug Jones. The Alabama Democrat won a special election when Sessions resigned his U.S. Senate seat to become a member of President Donald Trump's cabinet. Also on the ballot, former Alabama State Senator Bill Hightower. He's competing with Mobile County Commissioner Jerry Carl in the Republican primary runoff for the 1st Congressional District. The winner of that race will be facing off on with one of these two Democrats who are also on the ballot next week, retired Marine Corps veteran James Averhart and research specialist and college professor Keani Gardner. They're in the Democratic primary runoff. Here with us this morning, Adam Bourne, chairman of the Mobile County Republican Party, and also with us today, Terry Lathan, chairman of Alabama's Republican Party. And for the Democrats today, Ben Harris, chairman of the Mobile County Democratic Executive Committee, as well as Alabama State Representative Napoleon Bracey, who is chairman of Mobile County's Democratic Delegation. Well, it's all about politics this morning as we help you prepare to vote on July the 14th. Perspectives will be right back after this break. Hey, and joining us this morning, Mobile County Democratic Executive Committee Chairman Ben Harris, along with the Mobile County Democratic Delegation Chairman, Alabama State Representative Napoleon Bracey. Gentlemen, thank you both for being a part of the discussion this morning. Thank Good you. Morning. Thank you. The first question, especially with now Alabama being one of 32 states that are spiking in the coronavirus pandemic and three largest cities in the state as well. That's uh, Birmingham, Montgomery and Mobile. And of course, the governor has now extended the safer at home order to July the 31st. How do you think the coronavirus pandemic is going to affect voter turnout on July the 14th? Well, uh, certainly, Eric, one thing that we would like to bring to everyone's attention is the recent court ruling that allows uh, easier absentee voting. Uh, if you have an infirmity uh, that gives you concern about whether or not it's safe for you to go to the polls, uh, you may so indicate on your ballot and, and you will not have the witness or notarization requirement. That is a very important point that we want people to be aware of. Secondly, with respect to the uh, absentee application, and we certainly encourage people to get their absentee applications in, uh, there are some uh, requirements, some loosening of the requirements there in terms of having to uh, include your uh, driver's license or other copy of your ID, again, if you have an infirmity or if you're over the age of 65. So we encourage people and please contact us. Uh, we can help you with the absentee ballot uh, process. We encourage people to vote by absentee, uh, but the main thing, stay safe. No one should have to risk their health uh, in order to vote. The absentee 
T process is there and we're ver working very hard to make sure that people are able to take advantage of it. A lot of conversation goes on about the uh, safety of these ballots and some people expressing concerns even in the White House about uh, fraud. Representative Bracey, is this something that uh, usually we don't hear the Democratic Party talking about this? Is this sort of a, uh, a false uh, misnomer or what's going on as it relates to the safety of these ballots to protect against fraud? Yes, I, I definitely think it's a it's some misinformation. Um, absentee voting is a very safe process. Um, absentee ballots, if you notice, uh, on election night, when the tallies start to come in, a lot of time you may see one, two, three percent reporting. Uh, those numbers that are reporting are the absentee ballots because they're usually counted first. Um, there, it's a protected situation. Um, everybody will have an opportunity to have a poll watcher present to make sure that um, that those ballots are counted accurately and probate court will be able to handle that. But it's a completely transparent process. And going back to the coronavirus, are both of you all uh, feeling secure that different uh, changes have been made so that it is safe for those who decide to go to the polls? Certainly, I, I, I think that uh, some protections are in place and we encourage people to uh, to make sure that they're well informed by it and if you have any concerns please do vote by absentee we that certainly can be done and we very much encourage that well let's look at the two candidates who are running in the runoff for the uh, house uh, congressional seat do you feel that uh, they have gotten out there enough and that the voters are going to turn out for them to cast ballots for a good democratic response we certainly feel that way. Uh, we, we are proud of both of these candidates uh, in no particular order. James Averhart, uh, a 30-year Marine, outstanding record of service to this nation, uh, including in Washington, D.C., but also including in some very significant uh, areas where our nation's interests were at stake. Uh, Keani Gardner, uh, a scientist, um, a, a Duke-trained um, scientist who is uh, a wonderful candidate. They both have campaigned very hard. We feel like we can't lose as a party. We think that uh, we have two outstanding candidates and and absolutely will come out of this primary with the best choice for that race. Yeah, I, I agree with Ben. I think we have two great candidates uh, that emerged from the field. Um, and I think that uh, the Democratic response on July 17th uh, should be pretty high. And once we select that particular person, uh, we're going to be behind them 100% going into November, uh, pushing the straight Democratic ticket in November. Looking at the current events happening in the last two and three weeks with the George Floyd response to his uh, dying at the hands of police action, are you expecting a greater turnout among young Democratic voters because of that? I'll tell you this, we are certainly hearing it. We are on the phone with voters every day, and we've spoken to thousands of them. And there is an, a, a, an energy uh, and an excitement and a desire to see long needed change in, in our community and around this nation uh, that is palpable. We feel it coming through the phone lines. Uh, I, I, talk, I must talk to three or four people a day who say they're ready to get out there, that they will be voting by absentee or they will be voting at the polls, but they will be there. And so we are very excited about that. We think it will particularly show up in November. We hope, obviously, there, there are uh, concerns about uh, the coronavirus here in, in July, but uh, we think that the numbers will be good then too. But we feel very good about where we are going into November. And, and I agree with Ben. Um, the, the atmosphere is changing. Uh, you're starting to see a high energy um, surrounding these issues that people have talked about for so long. And these issues are no longer um, issues developed towards just the black community, but you see so many other people standing hand in hand with the black community around these issues. And I think that's gonna be translated on because I think people understand that, yeah, we have to, to protest, uh, we have to boycott, you know, we have to do these things, but we also have to vote uh, for the type of change that we wanna see. And I think that's gonna be displayed come November. 
Well, if you both take about uh, 30 seconds each and respond to, for the first time in a couple of decades now, the U.S. Senate incumbent is a Democrat. And what's the dialogue now among you all and other Democratic Party leaders about what it's going to take, uh, to, take to keep Doug Jones in the U.S. Senate? We certainly are doing our part here in, in Mobile County. We are as proud of our senator as we possibly can be. Uh, he's been a wonderful senator for this state, a uh, wonderful servant for this nation, and he certainly has done wonderful things for us here in Mobile County and, and for our party. And uh, we are thrilled. He obviously won Mobile County by a significant margin in 2017. We expect that he will do that. Uh, and we believe Mobile County, we're, we're uh, proud of this, we believe Mobile County sort of put him over the top in 2017. We believe that that will repeat itself and that that will benefit all of our local candidates as well. So we are thrilled to have Senator Jones at the top of our ticket and uh, feel like he's got a lot of momentum. He's running a very positive campaign and uh, we just couldn't be prouder of him. Yeah, I think we have a great chance in November. Um, the best thing about uh, this election in comparison to the other election is now he, he's an incumbent. Now he has a track record, a proven track record that he can run on about things that he stand for, votes that he's taken uh, in the United States Senate. And these are just things that is going to be so positive that so many Alabamians can relate to. Uh, he's just done an outstanding job uh, even before being elected. Uh, he was just an upstanding person, just a great person standing in the gap for people um, his entire professional career. Um, and I think this is just an opportunity for us to get behind him and just continue to push a great leader that we have in Senator Doug Jones and, and keep him uh, moving forward. And I think we also have a great presidential candidate um, in Vice President Biden. You know, we serve the pleasure of being delegates for uh, President Biden, Vice President Biden. I think we gonna push forward hard with the top of the ticket and having him and also Senator Jones is gonna create a lot of opportunities for other Democrats down the ballot. All right, Chairman Ben Harris and Alabama State Representative Napoleon Bracey and Chairman as well as the Mobile County Delegation. Gentlemen, we thank you both for coming and sharing this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Once again, Napoleon Bracey and Ben Harris. Up next this morning, we'll be talking with Terry Lathan, chairman of Alabama's Republican Party, and Adam Bourne, who is the chairman of the Mobile County Republican Party. Perspectives continues in just a minute. And joining us now, the Alabama GOP Chairman Terry Lathan and the Mobile County GOP Chairman Adam Bourne. We thank you both for joining us this morning for our discussion. It's our pleasure. When we look at what's going on right now, the state Alabama being one of 32 states that are spiking as relates to the coronavirus and the three largest cities in the state are also a part of that. And the governor has now given a safer at home order extension to July the 31st. Are either of you concerned about this as how it affects the voter turnout for these two very important races? Well, I'll take that one first, Adam. Uh, yeah, sure, absolutely. I think a lot of people are still concerned. Uh, we're seeing numbers in our state that uh, folks are really worried about. Uh, on the other hand, you have other people that uh, want to go out and vote in person. But the beauty of our election is for July 14th is there's an absentee ballot opportunity. And as long as um, voters have by July the 9th applied for that absentee ballot, they can vote as well. So there is another option, and that's the good news. And Chairman Lathan, you have a great perspective of what's happening statewide. Adam, give us an idea of what the dialogue and discussion is in Mobile County, the concerns about this coronavirus pandemic and how it might affect the turnout at the polls July 14th. Well, one thing that is uh, very promising is uh, our probate judge, Judge Davis, has uh, taken a lot of steps to prepare uh, to allow for safe voting for, for all the voters and the poll workers. Uh, he and the county commission have purchased some materials, uh, some uh, screens to place behind or between the poll workers and the voters. Uh, that should help quite a bit. They'll be using social distancing protocol at the polls, uh, asking people to stay, you know, the required six feet 
away from one another as they as they vote. So I think given that, I think voters can uh, you know assume that they're looking uh, at a safe experience coming up at the uh, runoff, and so we look forward to it. And then of course for those who are uh, you know concerned about coming to the polls in the first place, they always have the option of going through the absentee voting process. And you both mentioned the absentee ballots. Let's talk about that. Do you have any concerns because they're going to play a larger role in this July 14th runoff than say in the previous elections due to this pandemic? Do you have any concerns about voter fraud? Because of course we hear that from the White House to where that is an area that uh, it seems especially concerning among the Republican Party about what may happen with these absentee ballots. Well, there's a big difference in mail-in ballots just as a rule and an absentee ballot request. Absentee ballot requests, and I've, I've sent mine in already, but what I did was I asked, I gave my permission with my ID and with my signature, knowing I'm going to get a ballot back and then getting it back to where it needs to be. That's totally different than just a general, everybody on every voter registration roll across America gets a ballot sent to their home. That's dangerous actually. If the rolls aren't correct, there could be duplicate ballots going out. There's no eyes on any of the ballots that go out. So it's totally different. I do see Democrats talking about mail-in ballots and Republicans mail theirs in. That it's two different definitions and they're kind of muddy in the water a little bit there. So absentee balloting, totally different because you have requested it and you know it's coming back and forth. Also, looking at the four candidates, they're all using President Trump's name and image in their message to their voters. How does President Trump's influence work in these two runoff elections, and especially uh, his influence and endorsement in Alabama? Do you think it'll play a major role? Yeah, I think uh, it's very important. Uh, let, let's say this, and I love saying this very often, I'm proud that Alabama is the highest approval rated state in the nation for President Trump. I had the opportunity uh, a few months ago to share that information actually with Eric Trump, and he said, we love Alabama. And if you go look on the president's Twitter feed right now, January 23rd, he typed out in capital letters, I love Alabama. And that was back in January. So I think it's really, it is, it can be very important. But at the end of the day, um, we have seen, and we did in 2017, where that particular endorsement he made in the U.S. Senate race did not come to fruition. So I think at the end of the day, Alabama voters are very savvy. They love picking their folks. But um, to say that the president's endorsement um, doesn't uh, gain some weight with some people, no, I I think I think it does, but everyone still makes their own choices. And Adam, looking at that District 1 race where Jerry Carl, of course, taking on uh, Senator, former Senator Hightower, what's your perspective of that as relates to both of them? I don't think either one has gotten an endorsement, if I'm not mistaken, but both of them are using his image in their messages. Well, sure. I mean, they know, just as all uh, officials know in Alabama, that President Trump is a very popular uh, president, and rightfully so. He's done a wonderful job for the country. He's uh, broadened the economic expansion in the country. Uh, he's led, you know, during the course of this COVID crisis in a very bold and strong way. And uh, I think the candidates are picking up on that, and uh, so, so they are. They're, you know, wanting to associate themselves with, with his leadership during this time. Uh, so certainly it's going to be an interesting primary season in that house uh, house race uh, we look forward to rallying around the winner of that race in the uh, general election in, in uh, November now how do you guys think about the uh conversation and the dialogue and some of the claims that the candidates threw against each other. Is that healthy for the party when they throw out these things during a runoff election or is it just a part of uh, what happens in politics? Well, you know, I find that uh, that's a good question, but I think we ask the same question every two years, every single time there's an election because some of the th these things are going to happen. I don't find it to be any different than it normally does. We just kind of forget about it in the past, but at the end of the day, I think when voters go into to a voting booth, Eric, what they're going to, we're going to see what stuck and what didn't stick um, with their ads and, and the importance of those candidates getting their message out. You know, the positive work, the negative work, at the end of the day, the voters uh, are going to make those decisions. And so uh, I think when they, when we have vote totals that night, that will exactly tell us what worked and what didn't. Now, looking ahead to November for the first time in 
couple of decades. The Republican U.S. Senate nominee will be facing off against a Democratic incumbent, a senator, and of course he's had a little time to be in office. What's the dialogue going on behind the scenes from Republican, Republican Party leaders as it relates to what's ahead in November for whoever comes out of this race to represent the party? Well, I can tell you the differences, although he may be an incumbent since 2017, he, ha he now has a record and he repeatedly votes against the majority. That's important. The majority of the voters of the state of Alabama. We are not a left wing state. We are not a progressive state as far as left moving politics. The Democratic Party, quite frankly, has never been more left as it is as of today with their platform and their candidates and what they're espousing, um, not only in our state, but across the nation. So Senator uh, Jones has a record and we plan to remind everybody of that record. People are not real happy with him voting against our president for impeachment. They're not happy he voted against Kavanaugh. They're not happy he voted against the funding of the wall. They're not happy that he practically throws a parade for Planned Parenthood in any any time of uh, abortion issues. Um, and he voted against the Trump tax cuts. So what he said to Alabamians is, no, uh, I know better. I'm going to keep your money, you don't need your money back. And I think those things are going to bubble up regardless of how much money he has in his bank account, how many nice um, fuzzy TV ads you see um, from Senator Jones. But what he's not talking about is, is his record in those areas. And I don't think Alabamians are going to forget very easily. All right. Very quickly, Adam, take about 30 seconds in your response to running against an incumbent for the first time in quite a while. Well, we're excited about taking on uh, Senator Jones in the uh, upcoming election. Mobile County is going to be critical in that election. Uh, we feel like the county is going to have a strong turnout for the Republican nominee, whether it's Senator Sessions or Coach Tuberville. Uh, either one of those gentlemen uh, would be an outstanding leader for our state and a, and a great member of the U.S. Senate. So certainly we feel like we, we have a great uh, chance of defeating uh, Senator Jones, particularly given uh, the record that he He's established in Congress so far. All right, Alabama GOP Chairman Terry Lathan and Mobile County GOP Chairman Adam Bourne, we thank you both so much for sharing this morning here with our viewers. Our pleasure. Thank you. And once again, State Chairman Terry Lathan, who actually resides here in our local area, and Adam Bourne, will, when we come back this morning, we'll share a few final reminders for you for your trip to the polls on July the 14th. Perspectives will be right back. Welcome back to Perspectives, and once again, the primary runoff is July the 14th, which is this Tuesday coming up. And with the coronavirus not slowing down, things are, of course, set to look a little different at the polls. If you are voting in person, remember now you'll have to wear a mask to cast your ballot at the polling places in Mobile County. There will also be extra sanitation measures in place and social distancing requirements. The polling places in Baldwin County will also be clean constantly. The mask, face shields and gloves will be given to the poll workers and of course they will also follow the social distancing guidelines. The highlight race once again, former Auburn football head coach Tommy Tuberville facing former U.S. Senator Jeff Sessions for the GOP nomination for the U.S. Senate. The winner will face incumbent Senator Doug Jones. Also, there's another primary runoff race involving candidates from both parties. The District 1 congressional race between Jerry Carl and Bill Hightower on the Republican side. And then Keani Gardner and James Eberhardt on the Democratic side. And of course, we do have a sample ballot for both parties for you in Mobile and Baldwin on our website at fox10tv.com. And if you're voting by absentee ballot, remember, it needs to be turned in and returned Monday at 5 p.m. Well, join us here next Saturday morning at 9 for Perspectives as we discuss important issues and seek solutions. And if you have any ideas of topics that you'd like for us to address, just drop it to us at perspectives at fox10tv.com. I'm Eric Reynolds. Have a great week.